Hey everyone, this is a recap of the lesson I taught today. Unfortunately, the recording got lost. So, I didn't have enough storage space on my computer, so I'm gonna do this tutorial. So basically, we're in the key of C major. And the chord progression, in its most simple form without any added extensions or embellishments, is F, C, G, A minor. So those are the chords. So First chord is F major. My high E string is a little bit flat. Just a little bit. Use a string change. So, F major, that one is index finger barring the first fret, high E and B string together, then middle finger on the second fret of the G string, and then ring finger on the third fret of the D string. be an F major. The next chord in the progression is C major. So that one, it's going to be the same exact fingering as F, but, well, it's not the same exact, but it's going to be a very similar fingering to the F major, except the index finger, you're not going to bar it on the B and high E. You're only going to play the first fret of the B string. And then the high E string is going to be open. Then the middle and ring finger are going to stay on the same frets, but you're going to move them both down a string. So middle finger moves to the D string, and then ring finger moves to the A string. And with this one, you're only going to play the top five strings, so no low E. The next chord in the progression is G major, which looks something like this. There's probably three different ways to play an open G major. Some people play it with four fingers and have the middle finger on the lowest note. I've seen some people do it with three fingers where the pinky is left off. I've seen some people play it with the ring finger on the bottom. Do it, do it something like that. So what I'm doing is middle finger, third fret, low E. Index finger, second fret, A string, open D, open G, open B. And then ring finger on the third fret of the high E. I'm either doing that or ring finger on the B string and then pinky on the high E string, both on the third fret, something like that. Same chord, just a slightly different voice. Then the last chord is A minor. So how do you play an A minor? You're going to play a C major chord, right? But ring finger, you're going to move it to the second fret of the G string. And that's how you get A minor. So the entire chord progression is F, C, G, A minor. F, C, G, A minor. Yeah, so now I'm going to show you the extended chord voicings. What do I mean by that? I mean, I'm going to add seventh intervals to all of the chords except for G.
So for the F major, I'm going to do an F major seven. So that one, instead of barring the first fret B and high E, you're only going to fret the B string on the, with the index finger on the first fret. And then the high E string is going to be open. So now you have F major seven. Oh, and you're only going to play the top four strings, D, G, B, and high E. So no low E and no A. Then the next chord in the progression we said was C major, but we're changing it to a C major seven. So all you're going to do is lift the index finger off. And now you have a C major seven. If you want to, you can play just the middle four strings, A, D, G, and B, or you can include the high E. Typically, I only play the middle four strings, and I do that to emphasize the seventh interval, which is on the open B string. When I, when I only strum the middle four, I can really hear the, that note, the seven. But then when I strum the top five strings, then the seventh interval kind of gets a little drowned out. But really, it's just a personal preference thing. So just to recap, so far we have F major, and then C major. But this time, we added a seven on, on the top of both of those. So really, it's F major seven, and then C major seven. And then G stays the same. And then we have A minor seven. So with this one, you'll play a regular A minor, but lift the ring finger. And now you have A minor seven. So now the entire chord progression is. talk more about embellishments. What is an embellishment? It's where you add movement to a chord. It's where you add a little bit of sauce to a chord, if you will. So for example, instead of playing an F major seven and then letting all the notes die out, I'm going to play the chord and then add some sort of hammer on and pull off. Or I can add some sort of slide. So that pinky diddly do is called an embellishment, a chord embellishment. So what I'm doing is I'm playing the D, G, and B string. And then when I get to the high E string, I'm picking it open, hammering on with my pinky to the third fret of the high E and then pulling off. So you have. A lot of students, when they're first learning hammer-ons and pull-offs, complain that they can't get the hammer-on and pull-off to ring out. So if your hammer-on isn't really ringing out, it's because you're not pressing down with enough velocity. You're probably pressing down too softly. You're probably doing something like that. So you need to do something like. Something like that. And then the pull off, you're probably not pulling off, you're probably just lifting up your finger, and that's why it's not ringing out. But a pull off, you have to literally pull your finger off to get it to ring out. So 
So I'm pulling downwards. It's like I'm I'm using my pinky on my fretting hand to pick that string. That's why it's ringing out so loud. So now I have very loud and clear. If you want, you can hammer on to the high E string third fret and you can hammer on to the B string third fret. They both work. The next is C major seven. So that one I'm playing A, D, G, B. And then when I get to the B string, I'm hammering on to the first fret and then pulling off. So it should sound like. Students often ask me how to get more finger strength. I would say practice repetitive hammer-ons and pull-offs. So do an exercise like, where you're doing just that over and over again or do something like until your hand gets tired. Then for the G, I'm not doing an embellishment. Then for the A minor seven, I am doing an embellishment. It's going to be, so I'm going to play a string, D string, G string, and then when I get to the B string, I'm gonna hammer on to the third fret with my pinky and then pull back off. And just like the F major seven, you can hammer on to the third fret of the high E and to the B. They both work. So in context, we have want to you can do the same embellishment you did with for the C major which is where you hammer on to the first fret of the B string and then pull off to the open B string that works too What's next? I want to talk about substitutions. What is a substitution? It's what it sounds like. It's where you substitute one chord for another chord. So I'm going to substitute the G chord for something else. So I substituted the G major for a dominant E7. So now the chord progression, as you heard, was F, C, dominant E7, A 
minor seven. How do you play a dominant E7? Well, first I'll show you how to play a regular E major. Regular triad voicing E major chord is going to be open low E. Middle finger on the second fret of the A string. Ring finger on the second fret of the D string. Index finger on the first fret of the G string. And then open B, open high E. So now we have. So that's a triad voice E major. So to get dominant E7, you're going to take the ring finger off. That's dominant E7. So I'll play it again. F major 7, 2, 3, 4. C major 7, 2, 3, 4. Dominant E7. C major 7, 2, 3, 4, dominant E7, 2, 3, 4, A minor 7. So now I want to show you what I call a voice leading walk up. It's this right here. Da, 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 da. It's a lot easier than it sounds. So it occurs after the dominant E7. And then it takes you to the A minor 7. So it's going to be two strings the whole time for the most part for the most part so really like 99 percent of the walk up it's two two strings it's going to be low e and g string and i'm using my thumb for the low e and then i'm using my index finger for the g string i'm plucking them simultaneously like this so Walk up, it's going to be open low E in first fret G string simultaneously, just those two. Then middle finger on the second fret of the low E, ring finger on the second fret of the G string simultaneously. So now we have. Then the second shape you're gonna move it up two frets to the fourth fret. So now we have. Then index finger, add that to the third fret of the B string and play that note by itself. So now we have. Take the index finger off, keep the other two where they are, move them up one fret to the fifth fret. So now we have. So in context, it would be one, two, three, four, F major seven, two, three, Four, C major seven, two, three, four, E seven, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four. And
and you'll notice the final the final chord in the walk up is an A minor chord. C. They're the same chord. So if you want, you could go and then end on A minor. But you don't have to. You could do and end here on this A minor. They both work. It's whatever you want to do. I'm a little out of tune there. B string is a little flat. And as you keep learning and progressing, you'll get an ear for when your guitar is out of tune. So. open B string to that final chord in the walk up. So now it's an A minor 9 when you add that open B string. So my laptop's on 3%. Gonna plug it in. So what's next, what's next? Oh, now I wanna talk about adding lead lines into, in between the chords. the G major chord. I, I switched the E7 back to a G major. So now we're doing F, C, G, A minor. So after that G major chord, I'm playing the major scale. Those notes are from the C major scale. So I'm not going to teach you the entire C major scale in open position. You can YouTube search that on your own time. But I am going to teach you this lick. So it's going to be on the high E string, we're picking the first fret, hammer on to the third fret, pull off to the first fret, and then pull off to the open string, open high E string. So now it's... And just to clarify, you're only picking the first note. So it's pick and then hammer on, pull off, pull off without picking. And then after that, B string, first fret, hammer on to the third fret, pull off to the first fret. So the entire thing is C, 
So in context, slowly, it's F major 7, 2, 3, 4, C major 7, 2, 3, 4, G major, 2, 3, A minor, 3, 4. So, And then when you go back to the A minor, after the lick, you can leave your index finger where it is on the first fret of the B string, and then throw down the middle finger to the second fret of the D string. And now you have the full A minor 7 chord. I got a little ahead of myself there. Um. Got a little ahead of myself there. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about F minor major seven. So instead of playing a G major chord or substituting it with a dominant E seven, you can substitute it with an F minor major seven. So in context, it's F two, three, Four C two three four F minor major seven four A minor seven. I'll do that again. F two three four 
Middle finger, fourth fret, low E. Then I'm skipping the A string. So I'm resting the pad of my middle finger on the A string so that it doesn't ring out. See how you can't hear it? Index finger on the third fret of the D string. Ring finger on the G string. Fifth fret. And then pinky on the fifth fret. B string. And then I'm also muting the high E. So I'm, I guess I'm resting like the side of my index finger on the high E so you don't hear it ring out. So if I wanted to strum through this chord, you wouldn't hear any of the strings that I don't want to hear. So if you were playing with the pick, you wouldn't hear strings you don't want to hear. So in context, we have F, C, F minor major 7, A minor 7. So, um, with the F minor major 7, I was barring the D, G, and B, and that is how I was able to get that pinky hammer on and pull off. And then another thing I did was walk the bass down on the A minor 7. So I was doing, I was playing the A minor 7, the middle four strings, so A, D, G, and B. And then I added the ring finger to the low E string. And then I went low E, D, G, and B. So in context, it would be F, C, G, A minor. What else did I want to go over today? So, so far we've gone over F, C, G, A minor, then the extended chords, F major 7, C major 7, G, A minor 7, then the embellishments. And then we went over substitutions for the G chord, which were F, C, E7 instead of G, and then A minor. And then we went over the walk up, then we did another substitution for the G chord, which would be F, C, F minor major 7, and then A minor 7, and we 
talk a little about about lead lines in between the chords. Yeah, so now I want to talk more about single note soloing using the C major scale. Why would I use the C major scale? Because we're in the key of C major. So that scale is going to work over this chord progression. So first I'm going to show you the C major scale horizontally across the A string. So it's going to be, we're going to use our index finger the whole time. It's going to start on the third fret of the A string. And then you're going to go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And that's the major scale formula for any major scale. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Any major scale is going to be that formula. Now remember, it's not whole, whole, half. Remember, the first whole step is not the first note. The first whole step is when you move a whole step. So it's going to be root, and then whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So so a lot of students ask me, how do I get my playing to sound soulful, or get it to sound musical or lyrical? Slides and vibrato and hammer-ons and pull-offs. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about slides. I already talked a little bit about hammer-ons and pull-offs. What is a slide? It's where you pick a note and then without picking, you slide your finger to the next note. So it's, and you can slide up, oh, you can slide up or slide back down. A lot of students complain that their slides don't ring out enough. It's too quiet. It's because you're not pressing down hard enough. You're probably doing something like this, or you're you're fretting the note, and then when you go to slide, you're doing it too softly, so it's not ringing out. So as hard as you had to press down on the first note is how hard you have to press down during the slide. So it's, you have to continue applying that pressure while you're sliding. So this is what the C major scale would sound like if I added slides. And I didn't add any extra notes. That was all C major scale notes. And it already sounded a lot more lyrical and more musical. So slides, you want to practice those and get proficient at those. Another technique is vibrato. What is vibrato? It's where you slightly bend a note in and out of pitch. And there are many different vibrato techniques. Um, I know BB King has a signature vibrato technique, but Melanie Fay also has a signature vibrato technique. Actually, uh, I don't know if, if I could really call it a signature, but. Uh, because I learned how to do vibrato off of a Marty Schwartz video, but but I'm sure I've I've you know made it my own at this point. But anyways, um, some people bend up 
and then some people bend down. I bend down. So I'm pulling the string downwards. So slowly it's It's a little bit uncomfortable for me to do with my index finger for long periods of time. I prefer to do it with my middle finger. But when I do it with my middle finger, I place my index finger behind it on the same string. And I do that for more control, more leverage. And as you can see, my neck is kind of moving up and down. My, not my like human neck, I mean my guitar neck. Um, I don't know if I'm really doing that on purpose. It doesn't really sound the same when my neck is still. It sounds more vocal when I when I bend when I um, bend the string with the with the neck moving. But then when my neck is still, it doesn't even really sound like vibrato to me. It just sounds like someone bending the guitar string in and out of pitch. But it's not really like true vibrato. Or I guess whether something is true vibrato or not is debatable. So yeah, that is vibrato. So if you were to play the major scale with slides and vibrato, it would sound like this. So I would recommend, as a beginner, you practice pick, slide, pick, slide, pick, slide, and so on and so forth. So that would be pick, slide, pick, slide, pick, slide, so on and so forth. pull-ups mix and match those techniques blend them together you can get you can get really creative with it so what was I doing there I was just playing the first three notes of the major scale which is C D E hot cross buns Mary had, she had hot cross buns. So it's gonna be index finger on the third fret the whole time, ring finger on the fifth fret the whole time, and then pinky on the seventh fret the whole time. So first I'm picking the third fret note, 
And keep in mind, we're only on the A string. We're not on any other strings. So A string the whole time. So I'm picking the third fret, picking the fifth fret, and then I'm picking and then hammering on to the seventh fret. So it's a pick, hammer on. Pick, 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 hammer on. So that's how I got. Then I reversed it. Instead of going up, then I went down. So I picked the seventh fret, then pick hammered on from the third to the fifth. So, so I'm picking the third, hammering on to the fifth. So now we have, and then third fret pick. So now it's, so all together it would be, then the other way. Now it's also palm muting. What is palm muting? It's where you use the side of your palm on your picking hand to slightly mute the strings. You're not fully muting them because then you wouldn't be able to hear a note. You're just slightly muting them to get them to be a little bit muffled and muted sounding. So instead of it sounding like, it sounds like, using the side of my palm, resting it in front of the bridge. This is the bridge. This is the tailpiece right here. That's the tailpiece. This is the bridge. So I'm in front of the bridge with the side of my palm resting against the strings. And then I'm picking. Pretend like I'm holding a pick. And I'm doing all downstrokes, meaning I'm, I'm picking downward in this direction. If I were to pick up in this direction, then it would be an upstroke. So I'm not using a pick. What I'm doing is I'm using the front of my index fingernail and I'm using my thumb for control. Because if, if my thumb wasn't there, then it would be a little hard to control. See, I can't really. But with the thumb there, I have a lot more control. Yeah. And yeah, that really concludes the lesson. So um, have a good one.